There was one who was killed in Arkansas, U.S. And remember that in the past uh, months, mga tatlo ang pinatay ng death penalty. And one, uh, uh, two parents appealed to the court yung pumatay ng kanilang anak. Sabi nila, don't kill him. He is dead. We will not bring our son back. And it will not bring about justice. So ngayon, sa ating mga Kristiyano, mga Katoliko, what we are for, what, uh, asking for is restorative justice. It's a justice that restores restores the criminal to his humanity, restores also the victims or the parents of the victims to their own situation, restorative justice, rather than purity. There was again one who was dealt with the death penalty in Arkansas. <coughs> and he was asked, ano yung last meal mo? As you're asking your last meal. And he requested, ang last meal niya ay ang Holy Communion. Na-restore na siya. Still, kailangan patay na. In South Africa, there is this, uh, this story about uh, after the apartheid, in order to solve the problem of apartheid, they would have truth commissions that would go from place to place. That people would uh, would uh, bring out parang emotional healing. Ano yung gamdamin nila? Sino yung victims? And the victims can come out and just accept the truth. Sino pinatay nyo? And there were so many blacks who were killed during that time, about the, the 20 years of apartheid. So, in one town, small town, one, one white policeman no, came out and admitted no, that he killed the father and the son, <coughs> no, both black people. And then, uh, the mother and the husband was there. So, after the, the policeman admitted his crime, then they asked the woman to come, what do you want to do to this man? And he said, I require him to come to my place on Sundays. To come to my house on Sundays. So that I can cook for him. So that I can hug him. What I was not able to do to my husband and to my son. I would like to do it. That is historical. It gave peace to the woman. And surely the man, because of the love that is shown to him, changed. And we still have a lot of work to do to make people understand restorative justice. There is justice when the humanity of the criminal is brought back. And when the humanity of the criminal is brought back, even the victims or the parents of the victims and the victims would also get back their own humanity. But if you carry your own hatred, even if you kill the victim, will bring out the hatred. This will be the victim of the hatred, of the loneliness. Ang iba, I went last uh, two days ago to the Senate, nakakampanya sa mga senador na to pass the death penalty. I spoke with 12 senators. And some of them, they still believe in the idea of deterrence. <coughs> that with the death penalty, masasampulan, matatakot yung iba. They will be afraid to do the crime because of the death penalty. 
But you know, the idea of this deterrence has been proven false by all the research all over the world, even in the Philippines. Not because there is a death penalty, the criminals will be afraid to do the crime. What would deter them to do the crime is the surety that they will be caught, that they will be convicted, that they will be put to jail. But if that is not sure, because you can pay, or because the police is corrupt, because the judges can be bought, even if you get death penalty, yeah. that's why death penalty is against the poor. And only are the poor are the given, the ones given death penalty. So, if you are speaking about deterrence, it's not the punishment that deters, that uh, that would make them think twice about the event, but the surety that they would be caught, that they would be convicted, they'd be put in the jail. That itself, if that is sure, they will uh, think twice of doing that. Walang bilihan. So let's go to the last topic. Call of the environment from the scriptures. Ano yung panawagan ng environment? No, the call of the environment. John Paul II said, so already, not only with the, uh, not only with Laudato Si of uh, Francis, he said, Christians realize that their responsibility within creation and their duty towards nature and the Creator are an essential part of their faith. And that you have to tell no, the people that our duty to protect creation is an essential part of our faith. It is not peripheral. So if you don't teach no, about uh, the care of the environment, in your catechism class, you don't give them the whole Catholic faith. The same as if you don't teach the social teachings of the church. You don't give them the whole Catholic faith. So essential yan. No? So from Genesis, we know God said, let us make man in our own image the likeness of ourselves and let them be masters of the fish of the sea, birds of the air, the cattle, and all wild animals, and all the creatures that creep along the ground. So here, how do are we become images of God? Make man in our image, in the likeness of ourselves. So there is a model when God created man, and the model is God himself. And immediately he says that we are to be masters, we take care. To be masters means not to dominate, but to take care. That's why we are images of God, because we take care of what God has made. That's why we are co-creators. We take care of what God has made. And what is that? Everything. Kaya nga, the fish of the sea, birds of heaven, the cattle, the wild animals, this is how they divide the animals in their time. This is their zoology classification. Right now, we classify the animals, the vertebrae, invertebrate, <coughs> the cold-blooded, the warm-blooded. But in their times, for them, the animals are divided into the animals of the air, the animals of the sea, the animals of the ground. What you have in the air, the, the birds. What you have in the sea, the fish. In the ground, they divide the animals ground into two. The wild animals and the cattle. The domesticated animals. So it covers all. The fish, the birds, cattle, and wild animals. <coughs> and those that came along the ground, this is how they divide the animals. The wild animals, the domesticated animals, those creeping along the ground. At tayo mga ngalaga niyan. That's why at the very beginning, we 
are given a mission. And this is not even a Christian mission. This is a human mission. Mission as human beings to take care. That's the first account of creation. But there's another account of creation, chapter 2. And this account of creation, again, is the same. The Lord God planted a garden in Eden, in the east, and there he put the man whom he had made form. The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to till it and care for it. If in the first account of creation we were told to take care of the moving things, the animals, the birds, the fish, in the second account of creation, we were told to take care of the garden. To till it, take care and till it. No. And care for it. So that's part of it, of our own mission. No? Kaya, human life is grounded in three fundamental and closely intertwined relationships. With God, with our neighbor, and with the earth itself. According to the Bible, these three vital relationships have been broken, both outwardly and within us. This structure is called sin. So sin invades not only our relationship with God, but also our relationship with each other. Our relationship with the earth. So this is from Laudato Si, 66. In, if you read chapter 3 of Genesis, when Adam and Eve took the fruit, immediately the result, they saw that they were naked. So they protected themselves from themselves. They got leaves and covered themselves from themselves. The relationship is no longer that transparent. And then when God came to the garden, nagtaguna sa mga puno, where are you? The first question that God asked in the Bible. Where are you? Kaya kapag ikaw niya kakasala, God is asking you, where are you? No, and we're hiding in the trees, among the trees. Nahiya na sila sa Diyos. And then the punishment, part of the punishment, there will be now pain in childbearing. The one that is very unique of the woman to bear children, it becomes painful. There will be a struggle between the seed of the woman and the seed of the snake. Takot na mga hayop sa atin, nakikipaglaban na ang hayop sa atin. And what is unique of man to take care of the garden? The garden will not cooperate anymore. It, when you plant, it's uh, the, the grass that will grow, the thorns that will grow. Even the ground will not cooperate anymore. So there is this broken relationship with God, with each other, and with the earth. Because of sin. That's why if we have to heal, to redeem, it's not only to redeem our relationship with God and with each other, but also with the earth. And we are made conscious of that now. Because the earth is calling us to attention. Pay attention to us. Without climate change, with global warming, nananawagan ang mundo. So the results of sin, rupture between God and man. Adam and Eve hiding from God. Rupture between man and woman. Shame of each other. Mahiyat na sila. Rupture between man and creation. Struggle between the woman and the snake. Pain in childbearing. And from the sweat of your brow, you shall eat. Work becomes the Mahirap na ang, lay, ang, uh, uh, ang labor natin. Even before that, man is asked to work. He used to take care of the, of the rest of creation, no, of the garden. But now it becomes labor. 
And even childbearing becomes labor. Uh, laborious. So Pope Francis said, the external deserts in the world are growing because the internal deserts have become so vast. For this reason, the ecological crisis is also a summons to profound interior conversion. In external deserts in Africa, we are not feeling it here, but in Africa they have the desertification. The Sahara is expanding. That's why many people are losing their own uh, homes, their own agriculture. That's why many of them are going to Europe because of the expansion of the desert, desertification. And now it's also happening to us. Some of our mountains are being destroyed because of mining. And because of that, there is no longer water. The drought becomes uh, more uh, pronounced. No. It's because of our internal crisis. Naging makasarili ang tao. Thinking only about oneself. No. Kaya yan ang mga resulta. The storms in the sea, how we pollute uh, the, 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 the air, and the breaking of the ice in the Arctic because of global warming. The breaking of the ice would rise up the level of the sea. And already, some islands in the Pacific are being covered by water and by salt. And people are losing their homes, the mga islanders in the Pacific. No. I hear the word of the Lord, Israelites, for the Lord has a dis dispute with the inhabitants of the land. There is no fidelity, no loyalty, no knowledge of God in the land. Yes, sinabi ni Propeta, I say yes. So, the, the dispute of God with the inhabitants of the land. Why? No fidelity, no loyalty, no knowledge of God in the land. So what would be the result? Swearing, lying, murder, and stealing, and adultery break out. Bloodshed follows bloodshed. So because of um, this uh, no fidelity with the law, so there is this abuse among human beings. And not only that, <clears throat> therefore the land dries up. Everything that dwells in it languishes. The beasts of the field, the birds of the air, and even the fish of the sea perish. Tingnan nyo ang binadala ng kasalanan. The land languishes. Dahil sa pagkakasala na, tinauubos na ang beasts of the field. So many are extinct. And they continue to kill elephants to get their ivory. You know, also the birds of the air because of the pollution of the air. Because of the destruction of the forest. Because they want to plant palm oil. Because they want to plant uh, biofuel. So, inuubos ang Amazon. Inuubos ang mga uh, forest sa Indonesia. And the fish of the sea perish. Nawawala ang mga bakawan, the mangroves. Because of global warming, then our corals are being dried up become, because the sea becomes acidic. So the corals, which is the seedbed of many eggs of the fish, no wala. No, bus na binyo magista. So in the Bible, there's this relationship na nasisira. 
That's why there is the call for ecological conversion. So, bagong salita yan. Ecological conversion. Not only personal conversion of your sins. Ecological conversion. The effects of their encounter with Jesus Christ becomes evident in their relationship with the world around them leaving our vocation to be protectors of God's handiwork is essential to a life of virtue. It is not an optional or a secondary aspect of our Christian experience. So our encounter with Christ makes us more realize our role in taking care of creation. Our vocation, which is for creation, not to take care of nature. This is not optional. This is not secondary. It's part of our essential work as human beings. Hindi natin na-realize. Kaya marami sa mga lesson plan nyo, wala pa yung environment. Sana man ilagay nyo. It is not only under creation, but all over. Ang dami kasi mga consequence yan sa ating life of virtue, part of life of virtue. So, our Christian faith has certain convictions. Ano yung mga convictions ng ating Christian faith? One conviction. Each creature reflects something of God and has a message to convey to us. Kasi ginawa ng Diyos yan, we can know the Creator through the creatures. The same as you know the artist through art. Kaya mas nakikilala natin ang isang author sa kanyang novel, sa kanyang poem. Nakikilala natin ang isang composer, anong damdamin niya sa kanyang kinompose. So, the same also, we know God more through what He has created. Therefore, if we kill, if we make a creature extinct, a message of God is it. kapag nawala na ang some animals, some trees, some fish. So pati ang knowledge of God natin, ay mawawala. That's how essential it is. That's why it's more difficult to teach people, children, about God in cities, especially in dirty cities. To teach them that God is good, that God provides, that God is orderly, but it's easier to teach that, no, probably in Buntok Lagaw eh. Kita mo ito yung mga bundo. Okay pa yung kinoy ng hangin. Malinis pa yung ilog, you can point out. No, that God provides. Nandun yung ilog. No, pero kung wala na ilog, can you tell them, if God provides, wala ka makuha sa pasig? No? That God cares na wala nang bulaklak. Wala nang puno. Another conviction of our faith. Christ has taken unto himself this material world. And now reason is intimately present to its being. Not only human being. So with the incarnation, God became material. In a way, the material world has been uplifted by incarnation. That matter can hold God. Matter can hold God. And by His resurrection, Jesus is in heaven with His resurrected body. Even we, even, that means with His transformed body. That my material reality is transformed by the resurrection. So somehow the resurrection uplifts all material being. 
something of matter is now in heaven. And that will also happen to us. That's why our material body is important. That's why we care for that. That's why we bury the dead. Or even if it is cremated, but it's cremated respectfully. We respect the human body because it has been the temple of the soul and because that body will be resurrected. Another conviction of our faith. God created the world, writing into it an order and dynamism that human beings have no right to ignore. So the world has a, an order, has, has laws, which we cannot ignore. That's why if we destroy the trees, something will happen because the trees feed the animals. Yeah, there is this dynamism that we, can, we should not ignore. So we should follow the laws of nature. Kaya yung problema natin sa mga genetics. Gagawa tayo ng bagong hayop. Well, putting together yung iba't ibang mga hayop. Gagawa tayo ng bagong isda. O ng bagong tao with cloning. So we don't respect nature. Not only we don't respect nature, we think that you're better than God. We can improve what God has done. Oh, you see the human pride to become like God? The Pope quoted Bartholomew, Patriarch Bartholomew of Constantinople, and he met again this Patriarch in Egypt last week. He also went there. No. And uh, Patriarch Bartholomew is one of uh, the avant-garde in uh, making us aware of our Christian duties towards creation. Sinabi niya na, na Patriarch Bartholomew. Matthew, uh, Bartholomew has drawn attention to the ethical and spiritual roots of environmental problems. He asks us to replace consumption with sacrifice, greed with generosity, wastefulness with a spirit of shaming, and asceticism with, which entails learning to give and not simply to give up. It is a way of loving, of moving gradually away from what I want to what God's world needs. It is a liberation from fear, greed, and compulsion. Yan yung panawagan ni Bartholomew, Peter Bartholomew, the ethical and spiritual roots of the environmental problems. Yung sinabi niya, and this is part of the in, uh, ecological conversion, make the attitudes and the outlooks change from consumption with sacrifice. You don't need to consume, you have to say no. You have to say enough, not that because you have money you can buy. Kailangan magsabi na hindi, hindi na kailangan. For many people, what prevents them from buying because they don't have the money? No, but even if you have, do you need to buy that food, you have to buy that clothing? Mayroon ka lang sa pa. You have to buy a new one spirit of uh, wasteful uh, greed with generosity. Greed for yourself. Para sa akin, greed. Generosity given to the others. That's why by promoting uh, tithing, you're promoting generosity. Wastefulness with the spirit of sharing. Hindi lang itatapon. Paano natin maibigay sa iba? You know, Caritas Manila has a program of Segunda Mana. Kung hindi mo na kailangan, ibigay mo sa kanila, i-recycle nila, pagbibili nila. 
Second, the mana, what Anton was saying, provides us about 10 million a year of income. Imagine 10 million, it's a top of the land. It's not needed. But if you can still recycle them, clean them, give them to the people, almost every day, there are 30 to 50 people in Caritas, Manila waiting for the Segunda Mana clothing to be brought out. Kasi kapag parami nagdo-donate, sinosort out nila. Yung maganda-ganda pa, pinaplansa, inaayos, and then, ipinapipili. But those na hindi na masyadong magamit, then they're giving them out and selling them by sack. One sack is about 50 pesos. And many poor people are buying them. And from those 50 pesos, if they can just get one pants and sell one pants for 100 pesos, two bulas na. And they can get, they can, magagamit pa pala. Yan, sharing a citizen which entails learning to give and not only to give up. Not only to say no to that I need, but to give to the others. This is what we say about Alay Kapwa. So what you say no to yourself, I don't take the soft drinks, I don't take, uh, I don't take my meals, I don't take my merienda, you give to the others. A way of loving, of moving gradually away from what I want to what God's world needs. The mentality. Not what I want, not even what I need to what the world needs. So you are free from fear, greed, and compulsion. So, binigay na yan, no, ni Peter Bartholomew. By the way, Peter Bartholomew was started in the church, the so-called season of creation. And probably you can suggest that in your diocese. As you have the season of Lent, the season of Advent, the season of Christmas, you have the season of creation. It's a liturgical season, which starts on uh, September 1, ends with February, uh, October 4, no, Feast of St. Francis. No, and during that season of creation, the liturgy celebrates creation. And the homilies speak about creation. And we have activities to make the Christian people aware of creation. It becomes a liturgical season. Already several dioceses are doing that. Many dioceses all over the world. In the Philippines, I think four or five. And the season of creation. You can also introduce that. No? Suggest that to your bishops. No? September, September 1, October 4. St. Francis, uh, Pope Francis, also quoted St. Francis. Okay, nice to I believe that St. Francis is the example par excellence of care for the vulnerable and of an integral ecology lived out joyfully and authentically. <coughs> joyfully and authentically. He shows us just how inseparable the bond is between concern for nature, justice for the poor, commitment to society, and interior peace. Itong apat na ito ay magkaugnay inseparable that we care for creation, we care for justice for the poor. And in fact, the destruction of nature brings more suffering to the poor. Kaya kapag nasira yung mundo, ang nawala ng tahanan, mga katutubo. Nawala ng tubig, ang mga mangingisda ay mga magsasaka. Nadumihan yung dagat, nawala yung ating mga uh, mangingisda. They suffer more. Commitment to society because uh, uh, somehow destruction of nature brings about destruction of society. What is... Uh, what use is it, like what's happening in Beijing or in Tokyo, that you have high-tech materials and you cannot even breathe the air? That's why they have to buy 
the air. There are certain days that you have to put on the mask and buy a bottle of air so that you can survive. You don't get sick. Many of you, yung mas ating may edad na, we never thought before that you buy water. Yes. Na ibubote ang tubig. Never thought about that. But now it's so common, we buy water. Now probably you're laughing about buying air. But probably 20 years from now, you'll be buying bottled air. Bottled oxygen. Bottled oxygen. Oh. <laughs> An interior peace. Francis was joyful. Was peaceful. Now because of that. No. So makaugnay ugnay hands. No. All Christian communities have an important role to play in ecological education. Part ng one of the ecological education. It is my hope that our seminaries and houses of formation and probably parishes and catechetical centers will provide an education in responsible simplicity of life in grateful contemplation of God's world, in concern for the needs of the poor and the protection of the empire. Kaya ito, binigay na sa inyo ang curriculum na ituturo nyo. <laughs> Simplicity of life. That's true for all. We can still simplify our life. Well, my child is complicated with so many gadgets, with so many things. Grateful contemplation of God's world. Again, we, sp we spoke about exposure. Exposure to the poor. But one thing that you can do, and probably less controversial, is exposure to nature. Bring them to the mountain. Bring them to the rice field. Alam nyo? Marami ng mga bata, hindi alam ano yung duha. <laughs> hindi alam yung duha. Pa, ang iba nga, hindi pa nakahawak ng kalabaw. Hindi nga nakahayak, nakahawak ng sisiyo. Those of you on the provinces, this is one uh, good uh, project that you can do. Get a piece of land. And then uh, arrange that with nature, na may kalabaw, may pato, may tilapia, and then make that as a tourist uh, destination. Hey, photo <laughs> no, And let them pay. Mangisda kayo dyan ng tilapia, bawat mahuli nyo, may bayad. And they will do that. No? O, oh, maghanap kayo ng itlog, magbibilhin nyo. And you, you, you can plant their um, bayabas, and you harvest the bayabas, and you pay for it. And at the same time, you promote ecology. Yung yan, a grateful contemplation of God's world, concern for the needs of the poor, connected, and protection of the environment. Paghihiwalay lang. Paghihiwalay lang na plastic sa ibang mga bagay. No, the biodegradable, degradable, just that. Which you can do in a, in your own houses. And we can reduce and we can recycle. So pwede niyang gawin. You know, one thing that you can make them aware, project niyo, pwede gawin. Everybody of you get uh, sa bahay, may dalawang pasok, two pots or two cans. One can full of uh, soil, the other can wala. And when you eat whatever is degradable, no, ilagay nyo rito, and then lagyan nyo ng konting, uh, uh, konting uh, lupa. Hindi yan tatangahin. Hindi yan mga ngamon. No, hindi yan... Uh, 
uh, lalanggamin. And then again, you eat, eat banana, you eat orange, <coughs> gano'n naman dyan, lupa na naman. No, mga buto ng isda, lagay nyo dyan, lupa na naman. Mga gulay, lagay nyo, lupa na naman. Pag napuno na, may compost na kayo. And then, tell, tell them to plant even in the house, whatever, even if you plant grass, as long as there is green, then we have more oxygen. You recycle, kahit ng grass lang ilang kayo. And that can be done in the house. At hindi pa kayo tatangahin. No? Hindi pa kayo dadagain. Ipis. No? Wal walang ipis na iipis. Lagyan mo lang na yung daw. Hindi ipis na iipis. Hindi kang binagawa natin tayo ng aso. Lagyan mo ng mga kawal. Wala na. Hindi na mga kawal. Oh, so, you have the program, the curriculum. Sabi ko tayo pa pa. So, Uh, for your and then ecological conversion entails one gratitude recognition that the world is God's loving gift recognition that the world is a gift so uh, uh, we implant gratitude not utilitarianism not what, what a money can I get from it. What do you think? We have lost that. That's why people, when they see the mountain, they see how much money they can make. But do they see the beauty of the trees? No, the insects there. The, 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 the flowers and the birds that are there. They don't see. They see only how much gold there is there. They always equate with money. No? So, gratitude. Tell them to be grateful for the flowers, to be grateful for the trees, generosity in self-sacrifice and good works. That's ecological conversion. Self-sacrifice to say no. Good works to take care. At least you're contributing something. Take care. Ecological conversion also means Loving awareness that we are not disconnected from the rest of creatures and joined in a splendid universe of communion. So there is a connection between me and the flowers, between me and the stars, between me and the mountains. So as we have communion with the rest of Mary, communion with nature, So we are only lately aware of this. Before our spirituality is communion with God. How can I pray? How can I meditate? Communion with God. Then little by little we aware we have to be communion with, the, with other human beings. So we take care of human rights. We take care of the poor. We care of the ingenious peoples. Now we are aware that we also have communion with the rest of the So, part of the communion, harmony. So you see, again, the refinement, the refinement of our human attitudes. Before, we never thought about taking care of creation. It's only now that we are aware of that as a refinement. So really, the Spirit is guiding us to become better human beings. So that's how we say that the revelation happens in history. Even now. Uh, even now, greater creativity and enthusiasm in resolving the world's problems and in offering ourselves to God. Greater creativity and enthusiasm. There are different ways of trying to help and be enthusiastic in solving the problems of the world. And so many people are trying to be more creative than how we can do that. Talaga nag-alatatanong sila. And they're even putting people together. I have been invited to go to Thailand to talk with the other uh, representatives of other Asian nations. How can we take care of creation in Asia? 
So, may itong mga ganyang mga initiatives. No? There is this kind of interconnectedness. Interconnectedness. Kaya maganda yung picture, yung ruha mo ay kasama pala sa karagatan. Kasama pala sa karagatan. When the Lord saw how great the wickedness of human beings was on earth, and how every desire that their heart conceived was always nothing but evil, the Lord regretted making human beings on the earth, and his heart was grieved. So this was in Genesis, time of Noah. So God somehow, uh, because of sinfulness, of wickedness of man, at anong resulta? Anong resulta? The Lord said, I will wipe out from the earth the human beings I created. But not only human beings, but also the animals, the crawling things, and the birds of the air. For I regret that I made them. Dinamay na natin yung iba. Ayong kasalanan ng tao nang dadamay sa creation. 